messed with the people that I care about. And RJ, that means war. Now you remember what that's about, don't you? When you used to push me too far. Well, that was kid stuff compared to what you're gonna get now. You're a fool, Hank. You're gonna blow your whole career. I don't care. I don't care about anything except seeing you get what you got coming to you. And it's gonna happen this time, RJ, because I know what you did to Ben's car. I don't know what you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You drained the brake fluid from his car. Hank, I was in Chicago. Then you had somebody do it for you. You know it, I know it. Man, you've lost it. I didn't do anything. Stop lying, you sorry piece of... I know you tried to kill Ben. And I'm gonna hear you admit it, even if I've got to beat it out of you. And I will, you hey, got hey, that... Hey, easy, easy. Back off, now you stay out of this. No, no, you back off right now, Hank. Listen to me. What the hell do you think you're doing? Give me a little zip here, honey, will you? Alex, honey. Hmm? How did this get in there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> did it myself. <laughs> oh, I like you so much better this way. What is that supposed to mean? Just that you're not stubborn and grumpy, and maybe you'll go along with me on this deal. Oh. Alex, honey, if you think this little afternoon delight has changed my mind about investing in Blair's cockamamie company, it didn't work. I will never have anything to do with that woman. That is the end. You know, the happiest I am is when we're together. Really? Yeah. I just want us to be together all the time. <laughs> and how you feel? That's the way it's gonna be. Cause I'm your champion knight, remember? <laughs> no, I just, I just want to be around you as much as possible. I want that too. Cord, then instead of getting a condo over at Serenity Springs, why, why don't you move in here with with me? Careful what you wish for, Blair. You know, it's one thing to spend a little bit of time with me, but not a lot of folks would want to live with me. Of course, I'm not a lot of folks. Are you serious? Well, of course I'm serious. What did you think that I meant? Mm. Mm. I just... What? I, don't know, I, I thought we were talking about the future. Well, let's start the future right now, tonight. Tonight? Yeah, I'll just clear out a little bit in the closet and a couple of drawers. I mean, how much room can a man take up? Come on. What do you say? Will you move in with me? Blair. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. I didn't know that you had a girlfriend. Did I say that I did? No, but you said you got a, a kiss on Christmas, so I just assumed... I also said that she wasn't interested anymore. Let's just drop it. Man, I know exactly what you were talking about. It stinks getting blown off, doesn't it? But you know what? Don't sweat it, because there are plenty of others. Oh. Well, that's great to know. I never looked at the world that way. Now everything's rosy and bright. Look, all I'm saying is you can't let one woman get you down. I'm not. This woman's already forgotten. Well, good. So why are we even talking about her? What were we talking about? Who cares? Look, let's just get to this tennis lesson. I remember we were talking about uh, our birthdays when we were kids. No, we weren't. You were, not me. Look, Todd, come on. You must have some happy childhood memories, right? I mean, there must be one birthday that is kind of neat. Why do you care? What do you mean? Why are you asking me all these stupid questions about my childhood? What's going on here, man? What do you really want?
won't mention the fact that we're missing out on a great business venture and an opportunity for you to keep an eye on Blair and protect your grandson because I don't know how she's going to try to hurt him. No, no, you're damn right you don't. That woman tried to kill me. Said she loved me. I'm going to set it straight for you. Make out you're lying on the floor there. A tremendous pain in your chest. Crawling after that witch. Demanding your pills so you don't die of a heart attack. She looks at you. She laughs. She walks out. How would you feel? I will never, never forget what she did. I'm sorry, Asa. I'm fine. No, just forget about it. I'm fine. Are you sure you're fine? What if, what if... Aren't you worried that she's going to try to hurt Cord the way she hurt you? Cordero can take care of himself. I hope so. Because from what I heard, he was burned pretty badly by Tina. Many times. But you see something? My grandson's not a dummy. He has learned from his mistakes. And he will see through Blair sooner or later. And I just hope to hell it's sooner. I think for the time being, my moving into Serenity Springs would be best for everyone, Blair. Am I missing something here? I mean, the, the way I see it, that we do pretty, we're doing pretty good together. And well, less than an hour ago, you were saying that you were falling in love with me. Or did I hear that wrong? No, you didn't. I meant that. Cord, the way you just made love to me, I know that you meant it. Now, we, we are good together. And the more time that we spend together, the better we get. I agree. If it was just you and me, I would walk over to that dresser right now and start pulling out the stuff from the drawers and move in. Well, then what is stopping you? I need to think about my kids. Listen to me. They've been through so much this last year. Hey. They're just now getting used to the idea that mommy and daddy don't live together. And then that whole mess with with Tina, with Kane. I, I just can't throw any more changes at him right now. A and also. What? If we were to make this kind of commitment. What would happen if things didn't work out with us and I had to move out? That would be an awful lot to them. Hey, this is not going anywhere. We can take our time. Okay? Okay, I... I know what it's like to be a confused kid. But I... But you would. I need you to tell me something. What? I want you to, I want you to look at me and tell me that you want Sarah and CJ to get closer to me. Can you do that? Can you honestly say that, that you want me to be a part of their lives? I did not mean to make you upset. I was just making small talk. Yeah, well, don't. Me. Look, I'm just having a really lousy day. Let's... So do you want to talk about no, it? No, I don't want to talk about it. And why don't we just skip all these warm, fuzzy questions about my childhood? Now, come on. Let's just go play some tennis. Boy, you are not making this easy. Good. I'm glad you decided to take my advice. Get back here. Go after Todd. Well, Doreen, I didn't feel like I had much of a choice. Oh, no kidding. So, did you get the answers, I mean, to the, uh, four questions? You mean the answers to the questions that if I don't get the answers, I don't get my hands on that inheritance? Stop trying to be cute. Now, what happened? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? The guy is so hostile, it'd be hard enough to get him to talk about the weather, much less his, his warm childhood memories. Well, what did he tell you? He told me to stop asking him so many questions. Wonderful. Now he's suspicious. Well, do you blame the guy, Dorian? Here I am, a virtual stranger, asking him what present he got for his fifth birthday. Well, maybe you're not being clever enough. 
Oh, well, you know what? You're real good at handing out criticism, but I haven't heard you come up with a single idea of your own about how we should get Todd to start talking. On top of him being hostile, he's all bummed out because some woman dumped him and he... What? I can see the wheels turning. What is it? Oh, Dorian, I think I've got it. I think I know a way to get Todd to start talking. So what is it? What is this brilliant idea you have for getting Todd to talk? Okay, I don't have time to explain this. If we're going to make this work, I have to I have to act fast. He's going to come back here, and he's going to look for me about a tennis lesson. Find some excuse for why I had to run out, okay? Trust me. I don't. That's just one of my problems. We have never been formally introduced. Dorian Lord. Great. Look, you seen David Vickers anywhere? I was supposed to give him a tennis lesson. He didn't even make it to the locker room. Actually, he uh, just passed me a moment ago on his way out. He got a call, an emergency from um, the hospital where he's been working. And, um, well, it sounded like something he couldn't avoid. Yeah, well, he's not going to be able to avoid paying for this lesson. You can tell him I said that. Excuse me. Oh, I will. Todd. What? Could I buy you a drink? No. Oh. I guess you don't want to drink on the job. No, I just don't want to drink with you. What an utterly disgusting human being. Of course, I want you to spend more time with my kids. Well, I want to spend more time with them. They're, they're adorable, they're fun, and they're a big part of your life, Cord, and I want them to be a part of my life, too. Good. Listen, uh, I'm going to have them this weekend. <laughs> we can all spend plenty of time together. Well, well, why wait? You're going to go over there and pick them up right now. Well, I'll go with you. Can I, please? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I'm glad it's so important to you. You, you are important to me, Cord. And your kids are a big part of your life, and I'm going to be spending, and I want to be spending a lot of time with you in the future. And I want CJ and Sarah to get to know me and like me. And I know that it's going to take some time. But I swear to you, Cord, if you would just give me a chance, I, I believe that I can make it happen. You blew it, Hank. You assaulted me. I've got witnesses. I'm going to slap your butt with a simple suit Get him out of here. Like get him out of here. Saw. Take those cuts off. Hold them in a the hall. Well, I'm not waiting around for anybody. My rights have been violated up and down around here. I'm going to get you. Now, you want to tell me why you had one of my officers drag R.J. down here? Yeah. He tried to kill Ben. That's why. He's the one who drained the brake fluid out of Ben's car. And you're sure of that? Yeah. And I was trying to get a confession out of him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw your means of persuasion there, Hank. That was very subtle. Oh, come on, Bo. He did it, and I knew it. I know he didn't. I've had a tail on R.J. since way before that accident even happened. Hank, he was nowhere near Ben's car when the fluid was drained out. He was on a plane to Chicago. All right, fine, fine. So, so he, he get, got somebody to do it for him. What? Doesn't change the fact that... He tried to kill Sheila's brother. See, maybe you're right. That could be. I am right. Well, then why didn't you come to me about it? You, of all people, you ought to know that you can't just drag a suspect right in off the street, especially when that suspect is your own brother. What are you thinking? Obviously, there's something else going on here. Do you want to clue me in? R.J. finally got what he came here for. He's destroyed everything. We're not just talking about Ben anymore, are we? No. Thanks to R.J. Sheila left me.
Well, it ain't nothing fancy, but we keep it clean. Thank you. No, this will be fine. If you don't mind my saying so, it's probably a good thing you decided to pull over and rest. Looks like you'd have trouble concentrating on the road right now. <sighs> yeah, well, I've got a lot on my mind. Well, you came to the right place. You can rest and get back on the road refreshed. Where are you headed? Um, I'm going west. Where about? Chicago? Pittsburgh? I don't know where I'm going to end up. <laughs> as long as I'm far away from here. Pine Valley. One ordinary town, 25 outrageous years. And for 10 of those years, Cliff and Nina's off-again, on-again love affair captured all our hearts. And in 1986, what did Cliff do to get their romance back on track? Cliff proved he'd go to any length to proclaim his love for Nina. Nina! Cliff! Oh, I love you. I love you. Happy anniversary, all my children. After 25 years, it's more than a storyline. It's a legacy. This is your table, Mr. and Mrs. Buchanan. Thank you. I love being treated like a queen. And you deserve it, sweetheart. I know. Seriously, I crawled and scratched for respect for so many years. Nobody ever really understood me until I met you. And don't you ever forget how to claw and scratch, Alex because you do it so effectively. <laughs> and besides, I love your appetite. Oh, well, you don't have to worry about that. You can take Alex out of the wild, but you can't kill her appetite. Oh, Todd, just a second of your time. Look, I just want to get out of here, if you don't mind. The only way you're going to accomplish that is by having you drink with me, haven't you heard? I never take no for an answer. Look, you're wasting your time with this let's be friends routine. I know what you're after. Oh, what's that? You've been driving yourself nuts trying to figure out what Blair and I were doing when you dropped by her place today. Well, you can save your keep your hands off my knee speech. We're just friends. I'll be so relieved if it stays that way. Yeah. I don't know about that boy thing, CJ. Blair's uh, pretty tough when she wants something. Well, I that's a compliment, uh, I think. <laughs> I am about to get sick to my stomach, Alex. Hey, look, Sarah. There's Todd. Hey, Todd, hi. Good afternoon, Ms. Vance. Uh, I gotta run. Hello, Mr. Vickers. How have you been? I haven't seen you in a long time. I've been better. Was there something wrong? Well, it's always irritating to do your best work for someone and then have them not pay you. Deadbeat clients, huh? That is too bad. I'm talking about you. I helped you find this mysterious Bitsy woman, and for that, I was supposed to be paid quite handsomely. So far, I haven't received cab fare. Oh, don't you worry about that. I'm about to get that inheritance very soon. We just need a little more information. Which I guess is the reason you're here. Precisely. All right. What information do we need to find? Well, first of all, I need you to get close to someone. His name is Todd Manning. T Todd Manning, the LU football guy? The rapist? He's the one. And if I agree to cozy up to this convicted felon, what am I supposed to find out from him? I need you to get him to answer some questions. Four, to be exact. Wait a second. Manning. Manning? I'm sorry, are you having a hard time following me here? Oh, no, I'm following you very well. All of a sudden, you need information from Todd Manning to get access to the Lord inheritance, which rightfully belongs to you. But you know, it suddenly dawns on me that Todd Manning has the same last name as Irene Manning, whose cousin Peter Manning married dear little Bitsy Jones Manning. Oh, Eureka, you don't need to be Miss Marple to figure this one out. Todd Manning is a legitimate heir to the Lord Inheritance, the one you claim is yours. Oh, and let me guess again, 
Todd has no idea who his real father is, does he? Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. What difference does that make? Oh, it doesn't make any difference at all, Mr. Vickers. Unless I decide to go to Todd Manning and tell him all of this. Would you do that, Ms. Vance? What's stopping me, Mr. Vickers? One Life to Live will continue in a moment here on ABC. Why won't you go and talk to Todd? Well, because first of all, it would be a violation of our agreement, completely unethical. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sam, what is so funny? You're talking about bilking someone out of their inheritance, and you're lecturing me whom you have not paid on ethics? Oh, you're gonna have to do better than that. All right, I've tried this on for size. The past few weeks, I've been getting to know Todd Manning very well, and I would not characterize him as generous or ethical. So? So if you go tell him the truth, he collects the 27.8 million, and you end up getting stiffed. You don't know he'd do that. You don't know that he wouldn't. Sam, I'm telling you, you're a lot safer if you stick with me than you are by taking a chance with Todd. Safer, maybe, but not richer. Sam, I am telling you, all I need to get my hands on this money is the answers to those four little silly questions, and then I will pay you. And what makes you think that I'm going to have any better luck getting these answers from Todd than you would? Because you're a beautiful woman. Todd just got jilted by some girl. And the last thing he wants to do is hang out with me. And what do I get for being friendly? Sam, you get the $100,000 that I promised you if I inherit. Now, isn't that enough? Come on, you in or you out? All right. What are the questions? I knew you would come around, Sam. You ready? Ready. Question number one. Did Todd's adoptive mother have any scars? Number two. What was Peter Manning's nickname? Number three, why was Todd hospitalized when he was four years old? And the last question, what did he get as a birthday present for his fifth birthday? Hey guys, haven't seen you in a while. We missed you. How was Christmas? The best. We got a lot of cool presents. And Blair's were the greatest. Yeah, Blair really knows how to give a Christmas gift, doesn't she? Uh, you guys got some nice gifts from other people. Tell Todd about those. Daddy got us brand new ice cream. And Uncle David got us a kitten. A kitten? Wow, you must have liked that, huh? You know, the best present I ever got was a little puppy that my mom gave me for my fifth birthday. I cannot believe that Court associates with that rapist. You think that's bad? That's not bad enough. Why is he letting his kids hang around with that witch, Blair Daimler? I mean, you should take a look over there. I swear to God, she was Mary Poppins. I don't know, honey. She must be doing something right. She certainly is warming her way into his life, isn't she? I'll tell you something. I'm going to find a way to get her out of his life. It's just the last thing I do. So, Todd, you're working here now, huh? You got the job? That's great. Yeah, well, I'm cleaning up the locker room mostly, and I'm teaching a few tennis lessons. It's no big deal, but this is a paycheck. Hmm. Hey, look, Sarah, Grandpa Ace is here, too. Come on, Lou, let's go say hello. Yeah. Uh, you know what, you guys? You run along and say hello to Grandpa, and I'll get us a table. How's that sound to you? Good idea? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a real good idea. Uh, excuse us. Come on, kids, let's go. Well, things seem to be going great between you and Cowboy Cord. He hasn't blown you off for his family in, uh, what, a week? You are just full of clever remarks today, aren't you? And I especially love the one about a Christmas present. That was a riot. Sorry. Couldn't resist. In the future, resist. No, look, I guess I just got presents on the brain. Hmm. Today's my birthday. Well, happy birthday. Thanks. Oh, and don't worry about it. I don't expect any gifts. Look, I will get you a present. I'm just not going to get you a present like I gave you for Christmas, that's all. And I do hope that um, our little secret remains a secret. Yeah, well, I hope so, too. What is that supposed to mean? Well, I didn't say anything, but your big mouth aunt is... She's been after me. I think she may be on to us.
What makes you so sure RJ's behind this? Come on, Bo, you read the thing. There's not a word on that page about Sheila and me. And there's no way, no way she would ever just walk out on me like that. This doesn't sound anything like Sheila. He made her write it. Sheila? How, how do you figure that RJ could make Sheila write something like this? Come on, Bolo, don't, don't make me explain it, all right? I just know he did it. RJ's got something on you, doesn't he, Hank? Look, I didn't say that. No, you didn't have to. It all makes sense now. When you dropped those loan sharking charges against RJ, I figured you were protecting him. You were protecting yourself, weren't you? Hank, look, I want to help you here. All right, but I have to know what's going on. Now, what does RJ have on you? Excuse me. Yeah, Cannon. Look, I don't know where Sheila Price is right now. Why? Well, look, when I hear from her, I will. What happened? There was some nurse from over at the hospital. Said that Sheila went by to see Ben. Well, good, then get over there and talk to her. It's too late. She's gone. She told the assistant director that she was taking an extended leave of absence. And they said that she had a suitcase with her. Did she say uh, where she was going or, or why she's leaving? No, no, man. Not a word. Oh, my God, Bo. She may leave town. No, no, you don't know that. Look, I know enough. Look, I'm going to get RJ. He's going to pay for this. No, no, don't do anything stupid right now, Hank. Look, I'm going to do what I should have done a long no, time ago, Bob. Stop, stop, and think, all right? I know you're hot, Hank, and I don't blame you a bit. But if you go out there and you beat up on RJ, you're going to jail. You cannot touch him now. We can't even hold him now. We don't have one shred of evidence that justifies us keeping him behind bars. So he destroys my life, and I go on and do nothing. The only thing we can do is let him go, Hank. But then we can figure out what our next move is going to be. For there's only one move that I'm concerned about. And you can't stop me from taking it. Oh, yeah. tell you that you're an almost perfect person. I see. Well, I'm going to have to work on that almost part. Mm -hmm. I would like for you to direct all of your attention to me, as I will mine to you. I think I can do that. Good. Oh, baby, I love that. Oh. Yes. Remember, once upon a time, we talked about a wedding. Oh. Yeah. Those plans. Those plans. Yeah. And just to make sure you don't forget about me, I think that we should set a date. Thanks, Gonzalez. You can leave us alone now. What's the matter, bro? Having a bad day? <laughs> you know, you must be feeling on top of the world, RJ, with all the stunts you pulled to mess up my life. You're paranoid, Hank. I haven't done a thing. Oh, come on, RJ. Why hide your accomplishments, huh? I mean, you must be real proud of putting Ben in the hospital and forcing Sheila to leave me. <laughs> You've got no proof I did any of that. Oh, we both know you did. Now, you must be feeling really good about it, RJ. But you know what? Enjoy that good feeling. Because it's fading fast. And when it does, you won't be able to hide from the truth. And then you'll know deep down that you're nothing but a worthless piece of skull. 
Yeah. Well, that's what you always thought anyway. Yeah. Me and everybody else. Well, I'm right, aren't I? I mean, come on, you haven't changed since we were kids, RJ. I mean, even back then, you knew you couldn't measure up. You were always looking for some angle, some sneaky, underhanded way of beating me out. But you know what? It never worked, did it? Well, those days are over, man. This time you're gonna fall, and you're gonna fall hard. What? So you're admitting that you went after Sheila and Ben and Rachel to get at me, huh? <laughs> hey, that's your style, always has been. You would always go after people around me because you were too much of a coward to take me on Facebook. Man, shut up! Hey, come on, why shut up, huh? What, you scared of the truth? You're nothing but a wimp, RJ. Just a big-time wuss. You're just a big wimp who's scared to death of his big brother. Man, I'm warning you. Hey, everybody knew about it, RJ. Mom, Dad, Aunt Clara, everybody in the neighborhood. You weren't a man. You were nothing. You were zero. But I was number one, baby. And you are still zero, RJ. You are nothing. You are zero. You are a big, fat zero. <laughs> All right, that's enough. That's enough! All right, you saw it. He assaulted me, and I want his butt arrested right now. Arrested? <laughs> Man, you've got to be kidding me. No, you better put a lid on it, Archer. I'm going to make things worse for you than they already are. Gonzalez! You take R.J. Gannon down, I want you to book him. The charge is assaulting an officer of the court. Read him his rights. This is all a setup. He forced me to hit him. You saw what he I did. I saw you hit him. In my book, that's assault. Oh, man, this is a joke. You better shut up and get out of here, R.J., or I'm going to tack on uh, resisting arrest. Oh, uh, this, is a... oh. this isn't over, man. Oh. You're going to lose, number one. This time, I'm taking you down for good. At first, I couldn't figure out why she was so anxious to have a drink with me. Well, she has a thing for younger men. Yeah. From what I hear, I'm a little too old for her. Anyway, after she wouldn't give up, I figured she must be after something. Well, that's a good guess when it comes to Dorian. Yeah, well, she caught us together at your place, so I started to figure that maybe she was getting suspicious about what's going on between us. Todd, nothing. What's going on between us? Look, I know that, okay? Look, I don't want to have this conversation any more than you do. All I was doing was warning you because maybe she's going to pounce on you next. Todd, 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 wait a minute. Thank you for the warning. And happy birthday. Whatever. Oh. Blair? You and Todd you just seem to be very close. One might even say intimate. Well, one might be wrong. Blair, I'm very concerned about you. Don't get defensive. Look, I would love to sit here and have this wonderful conversation with you, Aunt Dorian, but I'm with Cord today, so excuse me. Oh. Uh, listen, kids, I think we could have dinner with Grandpa Ace at another time. Right now, we just came by to say hello, so um, we'll see you later, Grandpa. Come on. Uh, Cord, wait, I'd, uh, I've got something to say to you and Blair. I don't know that this is the best time for that, he said. Cord, I'm not going to start again, I promise. In fact, I was thinking about what you said. You're right. I went too far. Whoa, I don't believe it. Ace of Buchanan, capable of admitting that he might possibly have made a mistake. <laughs> I am human, but uh, don't tell anybody I admitted it. In fact, I'm, uh, I'm going to give you back your place in the Omega building after all. Really? What's in it for you? Uh, nothing much. Uh, just a piece of your company. <laughs> well, thank you, but no thank you, Ace. I don't ever want to go into business with you. Now, come on, kids, let's go get our table. Come on, let's go. Uh, Blair, wait, you win. I'm going to give you the same space, the uh, same rate you were paying before. Ace, so what's really going on here? Can a man change his mind? Yeah. I've just never known you to do that. Well, what do you say, Blair? That's a good deal. Should you take the offer? Not until I have my attorneys go over it with a fine-tooth comb. Don't worry, Blair. It'll all be on the up and up. <laughs> well, Asa, if it is, then uh, we'll see. Maybe we have a deal. Come on, Blair. I'm getting hungry. Me too, <laughs> sweetie. Let's go get our table right now. 
Well, I'm not sure what brought about this sudden change of heart, but uh, thank you. I hope we've put the past behind us, Asa. I really would like to see Melador work. You're my grandson, Cord. I would hate to have anything come between us. Well, I totally agree with that. Listen, y'all, have a nice night, huh? You too. Oh, honey, that was such a moving speech. Now, what's really going on? Tell me the truth. When I saw Sarah and CJ laughing and scratching with that witch, Blair, I knew you were right. If Cord wants to destroy his life, I am not going to sit by and let it happen. So what do you mean? I know Blair Daimler. She'll screw up this business deal big time, like she does everything else. And when she comes running to me for a loan. What a brilliant idea. Yeah, it's very brilliant. Because when I control Melador, I will control Blair Daimler. Okay, here we go. All right, we all set here? Yeah. This is great. Let's scoot you in a little bit. Um, I'll tell you what, could you all order me a hamburger? I'll be right back. Sure. All right. Hey, Uncle David. What is this? Here I am, finding you here again in the middle of the day. What about it? I don't know, I keep hearing from Tina about what a workaholic you are. Seems to me that you're more of a man of leisure. Seems to me you're becoming a royal pain. A little defensive, David? Cord, get off my back, okay? Just get off my back. Yeah. RJ's being booked right now. Thanks, Bo. I appreciate what you did. Well, don't go overboard with your gratitude, because I can only hold him for 48 hours, and I'm really stretching it at that. You know, that's a start. Mm -hmm. I still don't understand what he could have on you. But I can see you're not going to tell me. Boy, I can't. Yeah. Well, then you've got 48 hours to do whatever it is that you've got to do, Hank, and then R.J. is back out on the streets. I hope you can find Sheila, buddy. Yeah. Me too. understand why you're so tense, David. Unless, of course, you've got something to hide. Look, I'm really just getting tired of this, Cord, okay? You don't like me? I get that. You think I'm up to something? I get that, too. But you know what, Cord? I really don't care what you think. Now, if you excuse me, I've got a tennis lesson. Well, I'm sorry, did you want to grill me about that, too? Because the reason I've been playing so much is because we didn't have indoor courts at the club I belong to in Portland. So winter tennis is a novelty to me, okay? See? Now, that I believe, and that's fine with me. Oh, thank you. You know, I am so glad to have the approval of the great and powerful Cord Roberts. Have a nice day. Hey, kids, Dad's back. We ordered your food. Oh, you did? That's great, thanks. Cord, are, are you all right? Something wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. Um, actually, I just found out I am going to need to leave a little bit early for that trip I was supposed to take for Serenity Springs. What trip was that? Merchandising markets. Um, it's going to be out of town just for a couple of days, two, three at the most. Oh, I didn't even know anything about it. Why do you, why do you have to leave so early? Well, something just came up. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, it's not. You said you were going to take us to the rink tomorrow to try out our new skate. Oh, I'm sorry, kids. It's, it's just going to have to wait for a little bit. As soon as I get back, though, I promise you, I'm going to take you out, okay? No, it doesn't have to wait, you guys. How about if I take you? Yeah, that's a great idea. Like yeah. yeah. Good. Good, good. Thank you. I owe you. It will be a blast. 
But, um, where is it that you have to go? I've just got to do a quick swing through the Northwest. Mm. Seattle, Olympia, and Portland. What was going on between you and Cord Roberts? It didn't look too friendly. It wasn't. That self-righteous toad is certain that I'm up to something. Well, then you'll have to be more careful. We are going to have to be more careful, Dorian, which means no more meetings in places like this. Fine. We're too close to have it blow up now. Oh, we're very close. As a matter of fact, we're about to get all the information we want out of Todd Manning, and the best part is he's not going to have any idea what's going on. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm really sorry. Get your purse here. Here you go. Thank you. No problem. No problem at all. I I'm, um, I'm really sorry. I must have slipped or something. No big deal. Yes, it is. I mean, I spilled your beer. The, the least I can do is, is buy you another one. Sounds good to me. Coming up, can Brenda and Sonny survive the reality of cohabitation? Stay tuned for General Hospital. The critics agree. General Hospital is soaring like no soap in memory. Humor and style triumph. All of the bests of 1994 can be summed up in two words, General Hospital. All right! Find out why everyone is raving about General Hospital.